Hello, we're here today with Brian Wiesman, the Director of Sales with Calf Tell Hample Animal Care. Brian's going to be discussing managing calf housing in warm weather. Welcome to the program, Brian. Thanks for having me, Emily. What are some important things to know about warm weather calf housing management? It's important to, uh, to take some precautions as the temperatures heat up to, to prepare and to reduce heat stress in calf. Some of those precautions include evaluating your overall calf management program, which includes kind of three major areas. Obviously the nutrition aspect, the environment, and then the housing. And some of the ways to evaluate no matter what type of housing, what type of environment, or what type of nutrition your calves are on, whether or not there is heat stress is to know the visual what I call the walk-by symptom, something you can see walking by without a significant amount of technology or tool. Those symptoms are increased respiratory rate, which is your breathing rate. It's important to know that the baseline rate is 20 to 40 breaths per minute in a calf, so an average of about 30. You can obviously count that without a lot of tools. You can stand there for a minute or for a half a minute and, and get a pretty good idea. Other visual or walk-by symptoms of heat stress are a decreased appetite. As you're there working with calves day in and day out, you know what each individual calf or each group of calves typically would eat. And when you start to see them go off of feed, it's a potential symptom of heat stress. In addition, lethargy, laziness, the calf just not being as spry or as bright as normal. The calf's kind of laying around that, you know, three days ago and every day prior to that was, you know, running back and forth or standing around. That's another potential sign of heat stress. The calf's just kind of trying to cool its jet, literally and figuratively. What are the six steps to evaluate cat housing? When it comes to calf housing, relative to heat stress, of course, the number one critical issue is ensuring proper ventilation. And um, you need to make sure that the hutches or the pens, if you happen to be inside a stall or in a building, are in places where there's enough open area for adequate air movement. When it comes to, to outdoor housing and the hutches, you should consult your manufacturer about the appropriate way for them to be ventilated. Many have vents, some do not. Some of them have more designs in their thermodynamic and have some suggestions on how to properly ventilate. Some of them, propping up the back of the hutch will aid in some airflow. Shade is, is good, whether you're inside or outside. Again, making sure that you have as much shade as is practical and possible in the general calf area, but at least very specifically, some shaded area for the calf to be able to get a respite from the heat and from that direct sunlight, whether that's in the hutch, in the building, wherever your, your environment is. The second step is to evaluate the drainage. Standing water is a great place for mosquitoes and flies to breed, and obviously they would add additional stress. When you add the higher temperatures, since we're talking about heat stress in summer, that gives a head start to many of the pathogens, bacteria load, and you add moisture to it, many of the infections that we see in calves are very preferable to starting in, in damp areas. So try to have your hutches or your buildings well drained so there is no standing water, no damp spot for those bacteria, those pests, mosquitoes and flies to get a start. The third item is assess your bedding. In places like northern climates, Wisconsin, Canada, other places in the world where we get snow, many successful calf raisers will switch from a winter bedding type that's longer in particle length to a summer bedding type that is shorter in particle length. And two of the more common ones that are very successful are sand as well as shaving. Smaller particle lengths retain less heat, so they provide opportunities for the calves to be cooler, and they also help by having that smaller particle length and having less opportunities for flies and other pests to grow. The fourth one seems like it's a no-brainer year-round, but again, due to the nature of warm weather and the nature of many of the pathogens, bacteria, it's even more critical to clean and sanitize your hutches, your housing, your barns, wherever those calves are at. Again, they always need to be in a clean and sanitized environment, but those bacterial populations spike in the summer months and really have a head start due to the temperature. So that does make sanitation probably even more important than in cooler times of the year. Number five, again, seems like a, a common sense one year round. 
keep your feed and your water fresh. However, again, due to pathogens, we have more flies and more mosquitoes and more bugs in the summer than we do in cold temperatures. We need to make sure that we're even extra diligent. And oftentimes there's different management patterns relative to feed, water, and milk delivery in the summer for successful calf raisers than there might be in the winter. You want to make sure that feed stays fresh. It's kind of simple. While I wouldn't routinely eat calf starter, if it doesn't look like something I would eat for breakfast in the morning, which is sort of the most similar thing I look at calf starter to being, if it's not like the dried cereal I would want before I poured my milk on it, that calf probably isn't going to like it as well. So that's kind of one of the simple things I look at and say, I want my calf starter in the pail, in the feed area, to look like my, my cereal, my dry cereal, before I put milk on it, not after. Also, obviously, fresh water. Um, having water there all the time is especially critical with temperatures high. Obviously, calves need to drink more when they're stressed by heat. Their bodies need more water. They evaporate more water, sweat it off. Additionally, if you can have it fresh and cool, because water sitting out is going to get warm, having cooler water there more often, rather than just filling water once a day and leaving it sit around the clock 24 hours and refilling it, provides additional opportunities for a calf to cool itself by having that cool water. It also provides better cleanliness, less opportunity for bacteria to grow over the course of the longer periods of time that you might not change that water out. And so that's an area where I do advise and have the opportunity to discuss with people. Some people do a good job of making sure there's always water. They offer a bigger pail or multiple pails. And yes, it is a hassle to, to change out water or to offer smaller amounts multiple times a day. There are some labor costs associated with it. But in many cases, when people switch from larger pails to smaller pails multiple times, they'll see greater calf performance, less sick calves and faster growing calves. And then the last thing is consider your housing type. In the big picture, can have an impact. If you're not pleased, think about how you can modify that housing type going forward, and you can prepare for years in the future. When it comes to the calf hutchets, there's various types of materials from wood to plastic to fiberglass, and they have various benefits or detriments relative to heat. And even within the type, the plastic hutches, the completely opaque hutches provide darkness, shade, and less heat transfer. An opaque plastic a hutch is something that does make it look dark inside. It's not just colored. Similarly with some of the barns that are built that are fabric covered barns. If you're having light shine through, that means heat shining through and you need to be aware and prepared. A colored material does not mean opaque. So if you can see light through, that means there's going to be some of that radiant heat transfer. And so you need to be prepared with ventilation and with your management of all the things that we've just discussed to make sure that the calves stay comfortable and perform well. And what else can you share with us about the types of calf housing? When it comes to calf housing, there's been a lot of research on various facilities, specifically relative to heat stress, increased sun protection, results in cooler temperatures. Again, not really rocket science. I'd rather be in the shade on a very hot day than out in the direct sunlight. Calves will as well. By providing them with that increased sun protection, again, in a building, in a hutch outside, whatever your environment is, that'll provide less heat stress and encouraging those calves to stay inside that protected or shaded area during peak temperatures by making sure it's well bedded, it's clean, all the things we've discussed will encourage it. If you have a really good protected, shaded, cool area, but it's sloppy and messy, you're gonna make it harder for that calf to choose the right thing. So make it easy for the calf to make the right choice for itself. There's some research on housing, and again, as I mentioned with the types of housing, opaque or translucent materials, whether in your barn, whether in your hutch, if you do have that colored material, but it doesn't provide the darkness or the shade, you're gonna see in some research by Lammers, three to five degrees Fahrenheit, higher temperatures inside a colored hutch that is not opaque uh, than you would outside. And in some additional research by Macaulay and friends, the temperatures will be 11, 11 and a half degrees warmer inside, again, a colored hut versus the ambient temperature. Be aware of that. And again, if you have one of those kinds of environments, you can prop up that hutch to provide additional ventilation. Consider some management with shade. Consider the location. Perhaps there's some 
calf facilities on dairies or custom calf raisers that have a summer site that has more shade or more airflow and a winter site that is outside of the prevailing wind. So there's things relative to your housing type using this kind of information that you can use to manage to improve your calf performance. Great. Thanks so much for sharing your expertise, Brian. Well, Emily, thank you and Progressive Dairyman for the opportunity, and I look forward to further discussions on improving calf health. For more information about calf management, visit www.progressivedairy.com backslash calves.